Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, first thing I want to do in this week's video is apologize in advance for any background noise that you may hear throughout the video. I'm literally in the middle of town right now, uh, down on this walking trail by this little stretch of river, and it's still quite early in the morning, so I've got people jogging and biking by. I've got a road just up here with cars zipping by, people on their way to work this morning. I've got planes flying over, trains and buses off in the distance, so a lot of potential background noise in this week's video. So I apologize in advance. As a wildlife photographer who focuses primarily on finding and photographing backcountry wildlife, escaping into these pristine natural areas and finding and photographing the wildlife out there, this is quite different for me. This is quite a different uh, type of video this week. and. You know, I was talking to a guy recently, and he said something to the effect of, I wish I had the time that you have to hike and find and photograph wildlife. And it's just got me thinking a lot, uh, that comment that he said to me, because on this channel, I do focus a lot on the backcountry wildlife. I make a lot of videos in the backcountry. And if I've ever given off the impression that that's how you have to find wildlife, to uh, photograph. I want to apologize because that is not true whatsoever. I'm down in this area, again in the middle of town, and this is one of the very first areas that I ever started looking for wildlife to find and photograph. And these areas are wonderful wildlife habitats. Uh, these areas are wonderful areas to find wildlife if you've got a limited amount of time to do so, or if you're unable to hike for whatever reason. Uh, make it out into these more natural areas uh, or if you just feel uncomfortable doing so these more urban areas are wonderful areas to find wildlife so in this week's video I wanted to take you along as I explore this area a little bit and as I review with you some of the amazing species that I've been able to find and photograph out here already this morning I've been able to find a couple of beavers that I was able to photograph and it was just wonderful even though there were people zipping by on their bikes behind me I was able to spend a few minutes with those beavers uh, get a couple of pictures and a little bit of video footage of them as they uh, nod on some twigs and swim around and whatnot and I'll keep going this morning and show you guys some of the other things to look for when uh, going through areas like this, whether it's a walking trail or a neighborhood park, whatever it is. Uh, there's wildlife all around us, we just gotta find it. So on that note, let's go find some. You know, it doesn't really matter where you're looking for animals. The methods that we use to find wildlife or the concepts behind finding wildlife are very, very similar. Uh, if you can identify the needs of the animals and the areas that fulfill those needs, you have a much greater chance of finding wildlife, whether you're on top of a mountain somewhere or in the middle of town in just a little thicket of trees like this. You know, this grouping of trees here is wonderful habitat for birds. I have seen so many different species of birds in these trees throughout different periods of the year, all periods of the year. Uh, there's just so many different types of songbirds. I've seen woodpeckers, owls, and other various raptors in these trees. Because these trees here, they fulfill some of the needs of these birds. Uh, they provide a wonderful source of food for a lot of different species of birds with all the bugs crawling around everywhere. It's a wonderful source of food for these birds. Uh, it provides an area of shelter for the birds, uh, places to hide from predators, and it even provides uh, nesting opportunities for birds. Earlier this spring, I was just walking a little bit further down the trail here uh, when I heard some woodpeckers and so I was able to find the woodpeckers and follow them for a little bit and eventually I was able to find and identify the nest. Obviously I had my camera with me so I was able to spend a little bit of time that morning with that little woodpecker family as the adults came back and forth from the nest feeding the little ones. So these trees here uh, fulfill many needs for all the wildlife in the area or a lot of the wildlife in the area 
And so areas like this are just perfect spots to look for different species of birds and mammals and whatnot. I'm gonna spend some time here this morning just looking around, seeing what I can find. Uh, it's getting a little bit late for birds right now, but you never know, I've heard a lot in the area. So uh, let's see if I can find anything here this morning. Another thing I really like to look for when I'm looking for wildlife is a source of food. You know, we already talked about shelter, nesting sites for birds, and that little thick of trees. Obviously animals need food, and if you can find a good source of food, you can generally find some wildlife. So here I've got some rose hips. Uh, this is a food that I really like personally. Uh, tastes almost like a strawberry fruit leather or something. Uh, just very good source of food here. This trail has an abundant source of wild blackberries and a lot of native mulberry trees. And so one of my favorite, favorite summer activities is after I've, you know, put my little boy to bed in the evenings is I'll come out early summer when it's still light and uh, look for a mulberry tree that's starting to drop its berries and I'll just hide somewhere near that tree. And you can see a lot of raccoons and skunks and sometimes even the occasional fox come in and start to eat those berries. Those uh, mulberry trees, in my area at least, are just a wonderful food source. So if you can find a good source of food in your area, you can generally find wildlife that will come to eat that food those mulberry trees as well, they're really good for a lot of native bird species that utilize those berries. A lot of warblers and tanagers, I believe is the pronunciation on that. I'm really bad with bird identification. Anyways, uh, there's a lot of native bird species that utilize those berry trees as a source of food. So honestly, it's just like a wildlife magnet. If you can find a good utilized source of food in your area, you'll generally find wildlife to photograph. These rose hips aren't quite ready for me yet, but uh, here in a couple months, I'll come back and get some and, and uh, enjoy a little rose hip treat. But uh, yeah, like I say, if you, can, if you can find a food source, you can find animals and probably me there as well, utilizing it. So, <laughs> All right, let's go see what else we can find. Got some uh, ducks on the opposite bank of the river over here. They're just kind of curled up and napping right now, so I'm not gonna bug them. But I've actually been hearing a kingfisher a little further down here, which is awesome. I don't, I don't see or hear a lot of them along this stretch of river. But I caught a quick glimpse of him uh, as he was flying off. He was pretty skittish, which kingfishers generally are. But it's just good to see such a wide variety of wildlife along this little stretch of river. And I hope I've been able to show you guys this week that you don't need to hike to the top of a mountain to find wildlife. And you may be thinking, well, I don't have a nice river that runs through my town. That's okay. Uh, head over to your neighborhood park or whatever it is and uh, look for wildlife there. I just hope I've been able to show you guys that these urban areas that we tend to live in do have a wide variety of wildlife that we can photograph. and. You know, like that gentleman's comment of how he just doesn't have enough time to hike and find wildlife. You know what, this week I didn't either. I was planning on hiking a local mountain to find some mountain goats to photograph and I just didn't have the time to do that this week. But that's okay because I was able to make it down to this area and find wildlife down here to photograph. And it's just been, it's been wonderful. So I hope I've been able to show that you don't need to be in some pristine nature area to find wildlife to photograph. You can do it in the middle of town. And uh, yeah, I would much rather be out in some pristine wilderness area right now, but I can't be. So I would much rather be out here than sitting at home on my couch 
wishing that I was in some pristine natural area. And uh, I'll just capitalize on whatever I can, wherever I can. Uh, wildlife's wildlife to me and I'll photograph it where I can get it. So I want to invite you guys to do the same and uh, really capitalize on those species closer to home that you can photograph. And I hope I've been able to give you some ideas this week of animals that you can photograph in a more urban scenario. And there's a lot of species that tend to be even more common in these urban scenarios than they do in uh, wilderness scenarios like raccoons and uh, coyotes in some cases, foxes, species like that can actually be easier to photograph in an urban scenario than they can in a uh, wilderness scenario. So take advantage of those opportunities and uh, make the most of them. Thank you guys so much for following along this week. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be on top of that mountain with those mountain goats, be able to show you guys those. But uh, if not, we'll, we'll make, make do with what we have to work with. So thank you guys for following along this week. Always appreciate the support. Have a good one, stay safe out there and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.